don't eventually get tired. Then finally, be like, I can't get through your spam golem. Like, yet it, <laughs> it tells you that you can. Uh, un, un, Reading is hard. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. What's up, beautiful people? Oh, Jesus. Look at that. I am the triangle. <laughs> the triangle Jordan man. Triangle. triangle man. Doing whatever <laughs> oh, hey, the Jordan bits. <laughs> it's terrifying. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Ben Stone. That, not to be confused with the triangle, this is the one Jordan's thing in over there. I l- Listen, you've never seen the triangle and me in the same place at the same time. It's got to be the same did, person. sweetheart. That is Pedro <laughs> Mateus, man. It is kind of beautiful. <laughs> with you at home, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. That's right. What's up, people, man? We got a big, big show. A lot of Linux gaming news to cover this week. But before we do that, let's take a nice walk down memory lane and find out what Pedro was up to this week. Well, uh, I've been playing around with uh, this thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Surface. It's... Um... Yeah, it, it it's still jank. No matter what I do, the uh, gnome uh, on-screen keyboard keeps uh, sometimes not showing up properly. You kind of have to click away from it or tap away from it and then tap into text field again for it to show up properly. Uh, though I've been using Wayland a lot, and Wayland in this particular medium works very well. It works much better than X, especially when you rotate the device and the uh, accelerometer shifts the screen orientation. It's much quicker and much nicer with uh, yeah. with Wayland than it is with X. So That was, that yeah. was, that was <laughs> the thing I noticed with the touchscreen on my laptop, though, was like, I couldn't really tell the difference between Wayland and X in terms of performance. But yeah, it's a laptop and not like a tablet, so there's no yeah. like, orientation <laughs> switching or whatnot. So that, that's that's interesting to hear. That's but like, cool. it, it worked out of the box, right? Like. Pick, picked up that there's it a touch screen. Uh, on the surface it didn't work out of the box you need a custom kernel at least for this ah, model with the ah. older models like uh version uh, generation three and generation four those work out of the box but yeah this one still needs a patched kernel there's a mm. someone created a github repo that has a script that basically does everything for you which is nice it's really nice <laughs> <laughs> jordan what's new with you baby Absolutely nothing, because I was going to complain about something, and then I was informed that I was just wrong, mm. and was presented with the evidence to back it up, and so now I don't have anything to complain about. Man, <laughs> <laughs> don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> I just hate everything in general. That, that's just always my life. a safe bet. Not much going on here. I'm waiting. I was hoping uh, the sequel to my Steam controller was going to show up. It's going to show up tomorrow because I got that for like five dollars. Plus shipping and handling. I saw people online legitimately complaining. If you didn't know it was 90% off, I think they're all sold out everywhere. Not in Canada. Just not in Canada, man. <laughs> F you, Canada, you can't have them. Um, that's going to be a story. We're going to talk about it. Anyway, I was excited to get another one because hopefully I'll get one that doesn't require tool-assisted battery removal. Unlike the horse, which each and every week requires a screwdriver to be shoved in it. Ever so to be, to be fair, the, the horse doesn't need any sort of tool assistance because it's a big enough tool on its own. It's the Steam Linux Update of the Week Sale! Dun, 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 <laughs> yes. dun, dun. 2019 Autumn Sale is it's upon us, lads. We, we get to, oh, we get to nominate you too, man. The Steam Awards. Well, yeah, they do the Steam Awards at the end of the year and now you get to nominate them. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, nom, nom, nom. I'm going to be honest. Uh, really, I this whole thing, the only thing I bought was that Steam controller, and it was not from lack of trying to find things to spend money on. It's, we, it's sale fatigue, right? Like, Yeah, you, you kind of had a point with that, right? At, I, I mean, like, I, I ran into this a few years ago because, like, I, I keep saying I'm very, very picky when it comes to, like, the games I buy and the things I will, like, invest my time into. And... After a while, like, if there's not really much in the way of exciting new releases that, like, we don't get to play for this show, then at the end of the year when these sales come up, I'm just like, okay, this is on sale. That's cheap. That's cheap. Am I going to play it? Maybe for five minutes? Do I want to drop... Do I even want to drop $5 on it? Not really. The... Did, did you see anything, Pedro, that was, like, 
Oh, I might buy it. Oh, I, the only thing there that, were. Okay, here's one thing I didn't buy out of principle. And it, I don't even know. The Witcher 3. Diamond face. Yes, more diamonds for Jordan. Thank Deal you. Deal with it, Jordan. Um, but yeah, one of the things I noticed is um, if you're not us and you don't have, you know, a bunch of games already laying around and you're actually looking, if you go to our curator page, the games we've recommended up to this point, there's a couple of nice sales in there. Um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is like 67% off. So if you don't have that game yet, that's pretty recent. It came out earlier this year or late mm-hmm. last year. That's That's a very nice game and it's now... Linux native, but it works very well. Thanks, Farrell. Um, so, yeah, no, uh, that is an example. There's more there. That there will be a link for that in the show notes. But yeah, it, for us, it's kind of slim pickings. Not much there. But what do we think about the discontinuation of the Steam controller? Jordan, you had some thoughts. Like maybe. Well, the. It, I, I mean, I've consulted the wheel of booga booga. I've I've spun it a few times, and it seems it seems to keep landing on. There may or may not be a Steam controller two coming. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. May have. Depends on how haps. focused they are on the whole VR thing. What do you want in like Steam controller two electric horse salute? Because the two things. Give me a second, D-pad. This is not okay. A, this makes excellent remote, by the way. Um, but analog stick, I'd be very happy with another one of these. Maybe slightly bigger buttonholes and and a built-in battery. I know there's a pitch- yeah, built-in rechargeable battery. Rechargeable or, or- battery. To finish that thought, though, because I know it was like, but then man, screwdriver. You can replace lipo cells. This is not that hard. Just don't glue it in. Well, true, but I, I was I was just gonna say like act as a charger for like standard rechargeable batteries. That would be a nice touch. Yeah, that'd uh, be nice. Mm. Um, one 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 thing I'd like it, it was the thing that the smock promised that I thought was actually a really cool idea. But like being able to pop off the um, the touch pads and replace them with like buttons or sticks or something. Yes, that, like <laughs> some because like. Val- Valve uh, made available like the the schematics for like 3D printers, right? Mm-hmm. So it'd be cool to sort of enable more extensibility of the Steam controller as a platform to like better support various games, right? Right. Hmm. And for me, I guess the uh, the big one would be to swap positions between the face buttons and the right areola. The right areola could very well be where the face buttons are, and then you'd have bigger more prominent buttons where the right areola is. I, I would very much like that. It So I I, th- I think that's either a consequence of the fact that they kind of wanted to have like the programmable touchpads on the same level, or there may be, there may be a copyright thing involved with like how the Xbox controller is laid out. I don't know. Well, if I, we get that, a touch maybe some lasers, of a D-pad. We'll, we'll be good that's with it, man. Oh, possibly. Pedro, you did want to give everyone a mention that if you are looking for some things that we liked and that's on sale. Yes. As I mentioned earlier, um, go check out our uh, curator list and every game that we've thrown at least three chairs at, or maybe there was one of us that didn't like a particular game, but the sentiment was generally positive, then uh, there you go. There's the list. There, there's a lot of puzzle games in there because apparently we like puzzle games. Apparently, right? It's kind of weird go to figure. go back and like, <laughs> look through that. Uh, but... Easy to say. We're definitely across the board, man. We we have varied, like, some of those games. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's actually surprisingly a good game. And it's always nice to find yep. that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Well, you know what? You may, you may One of the reasons you may not be finding games you want to spend money on in the sale is because a bunch of them got nuked. Yeah. Oh, about, <laughs> you mean over, Artichoke over <laughs> Clicker is no longer on the store? No. Oh, so, uh, so... Val- Valve surreptitiously removed about a thousand, what, sixteen uh, apps, including DLC, uh, from the store. They're all they're all related to this this one publisher, uh, Dagestan mm-hmm. Technologies. Um, apparently, there was some stuff going on. the 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 line from Valve was that they were abu- There were a bunch of developers and publishers abusing Steamworks, and so if they're going to abuse our platform, they can't use our platform anymore. Um, and most of the games seemed removed, seemed to be kind of jank, but there were a couple well-received ones like Electronic Highways that I guess maybe used one of these companies as a publisher that got nuked as well. The thing, the thing here is that there's if you if you go through the Reddit thread, if you go through the PC game article, there's a lot of speculation because Valve hasn't really said much, so we have no real concrete information. Uh, reg- 
Um, aside from the fact that, yeah, Steam, Steamworks abuse, whatever that happens to mean. Maybe they're just generating a bunch of cards to sell. I know that's a fairly frequently occurring issue right. in the Steam marketplace, yeah. car, trading card abuse. So we don't we don't know, but uh, I do believe that these ones have actually been removed from libraries as well. Normally, if like Steam delists the game, mm. they're uh, they uh, let's yeah, still let you download these it, weren't but. just you know we're not going to be dealing with this particular publisher anymore. These were banned. They were yeah. outright banned. Uh -huh. I, we don't yeah, like Jordan was saying, we don't know why because it's Valve and they don't have any investors to please, so none of the information is you know public. But it, yeah, apparently a bunch of these games were being published by the same people, just that one publishing place, and it wasn't all above board. Well, you know, if we go by what's been going on recently, we'd be like, eh, money laundering. That, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Um, <laughs> under, under, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> I kind of had my hopes up because, you know, normally it, you can track, you know, they'll, they'll get like, this is not unusual, like per month, usually about 100, 120. They do take off, but this was like, nope, Mageddon. I was like, finally, steam cleaning. That's going to be a thing. But yeah, as Jordan, you brought up, man, it's just like particularly like one particularly bad actor. So mm. uh, apparently they were registered as like a bunch of different publishers as right. well, like Siberian Technologies or something like that. So, mm. well, they didn't take off any of the top releases from October. Nope. <laughs> no, they didn't. Then again, that, that'd be a bit um, glaring. But yeah, with this one, they say they have a little bit at the top. It's like. Yeah, with this, uh, with this, uh, in this month, they had four games either leaving or entering early access. Ten developers bringing a product to Steam for the first time. Thirteen different countries represented by developers this month, and thirteen games with some level of controller support. That is vague as balls. <laughs> but uh, the like the first one that appears in the uh, in the list is Destiny Two or. Um, Ban your Linux using ass, but uh, why that is a bestseller is a very good question because it's a free to play game now. So uh. then there's Indivisible, Trine Four, which we will have to get to at some point. Well, uh, Trine try, try Four, Four is not a Linux game. Let, let, let's let's be real. Is, it'll it'll run via Proton, but not a Linux game. Rosenbite yes. tap the <laughs> note button on that one. What about Secret Neighbor? That sounds not Secret, Secret Neighbor is not a Linux game. It, it's just uh, Jackbox, Indivisible, Tavern Simulator, which, by the way, apparently has a nudity tag, so I'm very interested in some medieval oh, uh, tavern If you boobies. go and look at the screenshots in the community tab, you'll see why. Yeah, but It doesn't take very long. Hot elf <laughs> on elf Pedro action. That sounds um, <laughs> horrifyingly delightful. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Good to see. We got a new version of Proton, though. We do, uh, version 4.11-9. Uh, they fixed the performance regression that was supposedly present in 4.11-8 uh, that affected 32-bit games only that used the XVK and D9VK. Uh, apparently, there were no 32-bit games using VK3D because, well, that's a thing. Uh, the... <laughs> Uh, apparently, uh, there was a fix reporting too little GPU memory for certain GPUs, so I guess the issue wasn't that the 970 was presenting itself as uh, 4 gigabytes. Not letting that go in. No, you, 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 you weren't getting that last that go 500 meg. You, 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 only get, you only get three. Um, the, the, the other one that comes with this is um, those of you who are... Like the four of you on Linux who have driving wheels and play racing games, Yay. you get some force feedback now, Woo. Uh, which yep. means that if you're if you're going to be using the Proton in the next story, too fucking bad, Ben. Fucking Could you bad. imagine the, the like that's your jam and you've just dealt with it and you're like ah no force feedback like that's going to and then jack you start you a up, game and right? all of a sudden the uh, the wheel goes. What the hell? <laughs> you think about it, man. You, you like one pinky driving, you're like getting used to it, and maybe holding, I don't know, hot beverage. Then <laughs> it's like, eh, and, that's and a that's, how you, pinky that's how you have to buy a second driving over wheel. the floor. Because <laughs> you, 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 you got your Starbucks in one hand, you got the wheel in the other hand, and then you're like, Dad! Too real. Oh, man. But uh, 
We get GE Proton. That's no food. Glorious that's Egg Roll Proton. This is this is a neat little project where they're trying to apply Proton patches on top of the latest and greatest mainline wine, which in this case is woo, far 20. Um, they did a bit of law wrangling here uh, mm. in this release because, you know, Glorious Egg Roll isn't as brave as Strider. So he's not going to be shipping Microsoft code that he doesn't really own. Um, anything that's freely <laughs> available will get downloaded as part of the build process. But yeah, don't go shipping code that you don't have the rights to distribute. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because the intention of this project is they are intending to upstream stuff to Proton. Um, yep. Yeah, I'll, 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 get, I'll get to that one then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the intent of this project is to upstream stuff to regular Proton so that um, Valve will have an easier time getting new stuff working um, with that support via the latest version of Wine. Um, a, a, according to this one, you can alt-tab again, but, you know, we'll cause the XFCE bar to show up. Even if you don't have XFCE installed, question mark. 100% of the time, baby. That's how we get new recruits. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> cue, cue the X Files theme, Surprise, man. I want to believe. Surprise, XFCE bar. Like, what the hell is like? It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> don't fight it. You're like, I was using rat poison. It. You're using XFCE <laughs> now, buddy. Uh, I installed this. One thing we don't point out. Uh, this is back to a binary release. Before this, the past chunk of releases were not. But you had to build it from source. And I looked at that. It's like, even me. It's like, nope. That's not happening, but you can download this again. It was like some legal thing um, yeah. on top of this, but installed it. Hope of hopes, but still no goddamn Batman. I'm pretty sure yeah. every, everyone, especially <laughs> Farrell, is trying to pretend that that never existed. I won't play. <laughs> Farrell is currently sitting, looking at what they, the build that they had ready to go and mm. going motherfuckers. Uh, but... <laughs> To be, yeah, to be the, fair, they did their best, and it still runs at, like, 27 frames a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the big thing about uh, Proton GE was, and that was a reason I had it, uh, was that it included the Media Foundation stuff already good to go. Basically, you just changed from regular Proton to Proton GE, and it mm. went, look, all the Media Foundation games all of a sudden now work properly. So... There goes the whole point of me actually using this because I could just tell Proton Tricks to. It's like this game, yeah. Install the Media Foundation stuff there. Well, maybe I don't. I don't want my Proton turning tricks, son. <laughs> well, uh, you can do it via regular wine I want tricks my as well. Family so. oriented. All right. Basically, family, you're not going to get proton. around the tricks. Oh, dude. Hey, but it's yeah, really nice. uh, uh, with, with I'm that. sure Valve appreciates like these guys actually sticking their neck out to test the new oh. versions, but uh, oh yeah, Va it, Valve totally yeah. loves people doing their work for them. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <Shushing>. <laughs> That's free labor, brilliant. baby. Free labor. I, I think regular Proton's going to be good enough, but definitely try this if there's a particular game that will take advantage of some of the fixes in there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. like the. Like they're 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 saying stuff like uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and like Final Fantasy Type Zero, American Fugitive, all that crap. Yeah, the, uh, those are the media foundation games. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, mm -hmm. Coming up next, if you've ever wondered what almost thirty thousand dollars of marijuana looks like, me too. Me too. We hope you're ready for the bit of news that's coming your way. It, it is a chunky bit of news, but chunky before we this, get to that... Chunky that. Now it's got peanut yes. butter chunkiness. Well, those are chunky, but eh, close enough. Uh, what, are you, what, I mean, what are your thoughts what's on chunky peanut you? butter? Jordan, are you a fan? Uh, d depends, right? Like if it's for like a sandwich, yeah, like chunky peanut butter. Or crunchy peanut butter, I guess it is. I like the crunchy, yeah. <laughs> Did it make, like, like, extra chunky with this, like, it, man, just put the whole nuts in there? I mean, that's just called <laughs> buying a jar of nuts. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. I mean, I mean, you, you, you can you can buy us a jar of nuts if you want, and you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. We got a menu called support. It should say nuts, but it doesn't. Support our but nuts. <laughs> Wait. Yes. Yeah, support our nuts, just like a pair of compression shorts. You can do so with Patreon, LibrePay, buy some merch, buy some PayPal stuff. We got wish lists on Amazon. We got some Bitcoin if you want to send us some coin yay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, um, money, maybe. Patreon. Patreon is the best way to support us. It is, uh, and you you get a bunch of cool stuff like uh, Discord access. You get show note access. You can RSVP to game streams. We did a big old Jack party on Friday, and you could come in and play Jackbox with us. It's pretty good. Uh, we got some people we got to thank there though. We got Nova King, our latest and greatest. Pat. Latest man, Nova rocking the Death Note status. What's up? In- Indeed, we 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 we, we, got, we got Steve Husbando. I uh, he used our affiliate <laughs> link to buy a TV, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I, and, Steve was uh, very happy uh, with it. He's like, "It's going to be the size of a wall," and like, eh, hopefully, it doesn't show and, up. And, and I, I, I guess I guess some someone wanted to see less of your body then, so they bought you a llama sweater. Yeah, man. See, the, we were talking about Wednesday, man. Don M, you got to watch out for him. This is why I don't put joke stuff on my wish zone for the studio because. <laughs> It it's just like a laser <laughs> attraction. It's like, gone. All right, damn it. All right, fine. I'll wear it. You know what? Yeah. I like it. Check it out. <laughs> it's the Dracula. Carl. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> He's got fangs and everything, but just, just just like the real Carl. Just like um, the real Carl. Then he needs that. <laughs> that means we got to do this. <gasps> oh. Oh shit, son. Oh, Don is going on the board. <laughs> and thus. With a busted ass marker. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, I'm noticing that. <laughs> it's because you keep huffing it, Ben. They're delicious. Uh, sh- oh. Sharpie number two. Don M has taken up the last slot on the fuckwall 2.0, which means, Ven, I guess you got to go down to Grand and Toy or Staples or whatever, buy a new piece of Bristol board. The fuck yep. wall. Three. <laughs> that A3 oh. uh, bit of uh, paper is not cutting it anymore. <laughs> is, that, is that A3 sized? I don't know. Frank, keep your hands to yourself. Don't fall on him. <laughs> Bad Frank. That motherfucker will bite you if you're not careful. Um, I know. I know. He has rabies. Man, fuck wall 3. 3.0, man. That's it's going to be a thing. I kind of want to do glitter, but glitter's not allowed in my house, so I'm going to have to like recruit one of my hippie friends. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Seal I, I it mean, in you, with you, some uh, hair. Even if you have someone do it outside your house, you're just going to be like walking around the house one day and like your attic or something. Be like, why the fuck is there glitter here? Oh, yeah. Right. (laughs) Oh, yeah. One thing I do want to mention. uh, We got got a t-shirt. T-shirts. Yes. T-shirts, hoodies, uh, pillow covers. We got got a brand new one. Long sleeves. Man. Okay. (laughs) One, One time a year, one month organ every year, the Hail Santa comes out. It is back. Hail Santa! <laughs> it's real. It's beautiful. And I spent way too long in Inkscape doing this stupid what? thing. So, what, 15, <laughs> 20 minutes? <sighs> More like an hour. Um, <laughs> it comes in black. It comes in green. It also comes in pillow, which is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, but it doesn't come in body pillow, and that's no. unfortunate. We get the things. Uh, that's over on Teespring site. You can find that at linkscamecast.com. And we don't have like ridiculous. I see people and I know what these shirts cost. And they're like, oh, well, it's only $35. And I'm like, you guys are robbing people. Those are like mm-hmm. 20 bucks. Come on. <laughs> so you have exactly one month to pick that nonsense up. Uh, or you'll a, die. That's right. I did have to rework uh, something I'm trying to simplify with the affiliate links. Mm-hmm. If you click on that, kind of get the idea what's going on here. Like we have a, we can't say we are supported by Amazon in any way because of affiliate disclaimer. But however, there are links to things like hamburger ejectors, which are real. Ooh, UKT, <laughs> Canada hockey sticks, Deutschland Bratwurst, and French cheese. So if you click through that, I'm just saying there's a fair warning that it will attach a thing on the end of url and we may or may not allegedly receive monetary compensation if you buy something outside of that link there indeed all right (laughs) so dancing around the issue (laughs) let let, let us begin with let uh, there be lutris some cheese let there be lutris and let there be uh well a new version uh the version is not five four and uh Strider has added support for Python uh, 3.8. Never heard of uh, it. 
Python 2 for added life, some maybe. config validation support for NVIDIA Prime offload, which is very interesting to see. I am still half tempted to buy one of those uh, mining only cards to see if Prime offload actually works properly. And I do have El Cheapo to try that kind of stuff on, so stay tuned. Uh, the <laughs> Uh, there's also uh, an issue uh, down around the middle of the uh, changelog that says fixed installation issues uh, for users whose username begins with X. Mm-hmm. So, Strider, what exactly is your issue with usernames starting with X? I'm pretty sure he just doesn't want XX Bong Slayer 69 XX using Loot. <laughs> XX Sephiroth 78 XXX. XX Stuntman. XX XX. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, the, the, the other thing that got fixed with this release, though, is uh, Lutris will pick up your Gallium 9 installations oh, for sure. um, your native DX9 goodness. Although, although I will say that may not be necessary for too long, considering D9VK standalone is <laughs> very likely going to be a thing, considering the guy who's working on DXVK standalone. Alone is the guy who writes DX who writes D9VK. Dude, did so, anyone uh, <laughs> like with the D9VK? Did anyone catch a whiff of the uh, that little drama llama that showed up about the one? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah, that, that, that guy was getting straight up stalked. He, he like straight yep. up was like, "Yo, man, he, he closed like some weird issue." He's like, "Nah, man, I'm not gonna deal with that." Then the dude just like hundreds of like bullshit and it know, wasn't issue. just his github it was like any github that he participated yeah. on just like stalker level emailing the dude yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, uh and twitter and their infinite you know finally josh was like yo this dude at replied you know then the dude panicked and like lost his shit as these mm-hmm. little fuck watts do fuck the <laughs> platypus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was crazy too because, like, in in the original thread, the guy's like, "Clearly, you don't care enough to like give us information about this bug, so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna close it because you're not helping." And <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Uh, anyway, that that was like unnecessary. But hey, we know personally those type of people exist. Yes, yes. some of them have T-shirts <laughs> for faces. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> that's not the only Lutris news no no it isn't double get out, get out, get out the money, penguin <laughs> get the penguin oh anonymous you bought a classic tea yay yeah yeah we we, 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 we some, someone bought a hail santa and a and a penguin shirt okay also i didn't me. know that worked um brilliant <laughs> it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so, raining visels that's right man Team Sweeney. has been awarded the epic M- 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 mega grand feel free to clip that out um for the project's 10th birthday this comes from uh, Fra- uh strata le Pew. He- he's in chat room right now you can see him look at him he's oh he's brilliant <laughs> uh, he-, he got the twenty five thousand wet stinky caches from that initiative with the epic mega games grant um da 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 anyway frenchy got paid son let's just go ahead and say oh yeah that. And he's going to be able to roll this in and really help out the Lutris project, man. Because I saw that. And I was like, yay. That, we were talking to the pre-pre super show. I was like, even sitting down to those, like, it just made me happy. I'm like, right on. That gives you the good feels. Yep. Yeah. Pedro. This is just good. I mean, it's for Strider, it's great because it's like some money to actually help develop Lutris. Of course, he's going to have to pick up the pace now, but yeah. Uh, also, uh, it's Even also a very, very positive like thing. For like yeah. eight minutes. Uh, it's also a very positive thing because that's $25,000 less that Epic gets to spend on buying exclusives. Yeah, so when, when, when you say helping out Strider <laughs> develop Lutris, what that really means is purchasing cannabis. Like, a lot of <laughs> cannabis. Like... <laughs> So well, he does live in California, so there's right, that. right. No, like you, you know, you can buy like those giant like twenty five pound gummy gummy bears. Like it's gonna be that, but like a cannabis gummy. No, I like you. I, I like the first revision, gummy bears. Um, gummy bears. Gummy bears. bears. It, okay. It's filled with gunpowder and THC. One um, thing I did have to notice online was some of these motherfuckers need to get up out of their mom's basement and kind of learn how the world works because I saw on Reddit of all places. Imagine. Uh, a post that and I'm paraphrasing, but just a little bit that very much along the lines of Lutris should be focused on getting more developers instead of trying to get money. 
to my brain froze. It tapped out. It's like, you didn't just read that. And it's like, I think we just read that. And it's like, let's try it one more time. It's like, oh, wow. I, I didn't know what to say after that. That um, Check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I love Frenchie. He's the closest thing I have to a re- IRL nemesis. And uh, <laughs> former co-host with one of our shows, LWDW, my, go watch it on Wednesday. But for you end users, you got to look at it like this. Here's what Epic's doing, man. They're spreading around some cash. Some of this cash happened to fall with the Lutris project, and it will absolutely, worst case scenario, help with compatibility with the Epic launcher. That's a yes. good thing. That's a win-win. No matter how much you might not like Tim Bits, old Sweeney sauce. And everyone, everyone, if you're running an open source project, you know what, man? You can imagine, you can think about like how much breathing room $25,000 would give you for the project. Like if we were doing it, had that, come on, Tim, call me. But with Lutris, that's definitely going to help out and new things will come from that. Yeah, it's like, even if it was Microsoft, man, hey, money, money, put it to good use in the bank. Yeah. That's brilliant. Be happy yep. for Strat. Oh, Frenchie, I'm, don't be jelly, okay? You know what? You can be a little jelly. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. You can you can totally be against like where that money come from came from or what the intent of it is to basically offload Linux support to someone who's actually going to do it. But again, you can also be happy that you know Strider's project is being financially compensated and is successful, right? You, mm-hmm. Cognitive dissonance is a feature of the human brain that some kind sometimes can be leveraged for good. Sometimes, yep. It yeah, can, the. Um, uh, I very much am of that opinion because, yeah, Epic, they haven't been doing so well for the Linux stuff, and I kind of hate them for that. But then they drop 25k on Lutris, like, yeah, that's pretty cool. It, it, and Mike it, G it doesn't forgive all the other shit that they do, but you can, <laughs> you can do good things and you can do bad things, right? So there you go. This, Congratulations, this, Strider. I hope you don't it, kill all your brain cells. It's results. good, man. It, it's good. So just, just focus on that. It, it's going to be spent well no matter you know it's not like it came from microsoft people okay yeah it just yeah. came from china yeah same difference uh <laughs> 10 cent money <laughs> i got to use we, we have a little video toaster known as a 2060 that can play quick too why am i talking about that because there was an update to the rtx on version 1.2 free game it's kind of weird launching a native Linux game that starts off with bethesda like in the screen, yeah. like what? <laughs> that kind of takes you back. <clears throat> However, don't get too excited if you have like a little 2060 with like 0.5 of a tensor core, because you're still going to be rocking about 40 FERPs at 1080p. And, uh, but for the updates, they've, uh, the rendering of glass that's been improved, uh, along with the reflections, and there are options to enable dynamic resolution. Ah, words, English. Re- resolution. Wherever right. we're wrong. Dynamic resolution scaling when uh, dynamic scaling is activated, which is a legitimate option. And yeah, it, it still runs at all right. It still runs at faster than your 1080 Ti. That's the one thing I got on you, man. 14 frames a second, baby. 14 frames a <laughs> second. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, at 720p uh, with everything on low, uh, this 1080 can push 30 ish. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, if, if you if you jack it down to like six six hundred by four eighty or right. whatever, six forty by four eighty. <laughs> yeah, I, it, I get I get like one hundred twenty frames a second RDX on. If Woo! I knock it down to seven twenty p, I I can ride that sixty just kind of if I squint hard enough. But I mean, it looks okay. I did the same thing. I was like, yeah, okay, that's neat. Uninstalled it. But hey, <laughs> you do have to keep in mind this is a fully path traced game. This isn't like just fucking around a little bit with some mud puddles, you know. Yeah, no, so, no, no and, it, it's like the whole thing. Right. It, it, it looks really good. Like they have the they they fixed up a bunch of the reflective surfaces stuff. Like the lighting looks a lot better now. Um, it and I mean, really, this is just a glorified tech demo. Just be like, hey, we've taken an old game, we added some RTX bits to it. Right. Look, look how good it looks. This game from like two thousand what three or whatever. And it's also a very good example of Nvidia being like, hey man, this works with Vulcan people. Yes, we got the shim. Make it happen. Okay, but Mine. yeah, the performance oh. is still a bit poop. Oh no, it's great <laughs> if you have a twenty eighty Ti. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, it's great if you got a yes, 12 buy the twelve hundred dollar yeah, video right. card. Yeah, uh huh. Mm-hmm. For quick too. I, I I spent mine already, and I can't. Strider, do that, so. there you go. There's your first purchase for Lutris. You need to test that. 
Yeah. <laughs> All go right. Lion 403. It's out. It's a maintenance release. According to the high level patch alerts, there's national language support file fixes and other various bug fixes. The thing that stood out for me is, you know, if you're if you're one of the crazy people, you just straight up run Sigwin on Wine, your your dash binary works. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's there's a bunch of other fixes for a bunch of games like uh, Chronicles of Mistara. Uh, will properly load the DX11 library. Um, Visual Studio 2017 will install. Uh, Adobe InDesign, Oracle Java. All this, it's a lot of stuff where you say, "Why the hell is Wine actually patching this stuff in?" And it's for completeness' sake, right? Like the entire point is one hundred percent. Like, implement who the, are you people? Stuff. Because you're saying things like, oh, wow, what? What is this program to the Googles? I'm like, what? Okay, yeah. but that's what Wine's good at, isn't it, Jordan? Like maintaining yeah. legacy support for stuff that's not going to run on Windows at some point. Uh, absolutely. It, it is becoming the better Win32 API than, you know, the Windows one. Mm. Slowly but surely. <laughs> I mean, it, I get, we, we've said it before. It's a, very, it's a Herculean task, right? They're, they're trying to make Windows apps run under Linux, oh. and that's not... It's not an easy task that, to begin with. I would not wish that on my worst friend, but yeah, especially when you're shifting one thing and it's probably going to jack up four things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, Indeed. this is the, uh, like Jordan said, it's a maintenance release for the stable version. Uh, this is the 4.0 version. So if you just install wine with sudo apt install wine, that's the version that gets pulled down by default. So yeah, if, say you're running wine for the sake of running video games and whatnot you should be using the development version because or, pro or, or proton yeah, that's or proton yeah because yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah even proton is up to wine 411 so that that's more current but or, yeah or, or it's you can um, use the glorious egg roll or you can give lutris a try hmm. it'll no, do all of that for you you don't money. even have to worry about it so out of the corner of my eye, I read this next story as hentai net AI blaster, but <laughs> sorry to build I, I, that I up. mean, you, you, you can say that. If you, if you want to blast some hentai, it's the way to do it. No, Hestia, um, named after the Greek goddess of the forge, who sat in the middle of Mount Olympus. I know this because I was a giant nerd as a child. Anyways, um, <laughs> this is, this is a... Uh, that, right? No. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a machine learning assisted tool for um, reviewing Overwatch uh, reports. Overwatch is the system that Valve cleverly named to not confuse people with the Blizzard product uh, that will essentially go through uh, VAC ban requests, right? Like, if it detects that you're cheating, you'll go through Overwatch. They'll have a process there. And, um, yeah, you'll it will be determined whether you get your account locked or not. Uh, this one is... Uh, effectively like a basement project right like this person it's a one it's a one man project it's made by some like 14 year old kid who um worked on it in his spare time and uh in reviewing overwatch requests it is able to what was it like uh 98% 98.36% yeah yeah <laughs> ac accurately flag people who are actual cheaters now the, like you might say, oh wow, this is great, but you have to realize that this is the data set that this thing is working off of is people who have already been reported for cheating. So it's not like, oh, mm -hmm. I just run it on a game server and we'll just pick out all the cheaters. No, it'll actually confirm whether or not people are cheating or not. But it's still it's still very impressive, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Valve's going to be so Valve tossed out a uh, bounty to this guy as well for this. Mm. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be some more cash moving in this guy's direction vis-a-vis -vis job offers or <laughs> just like more contract work. Yeah, yep. because yeah, it's like ninety eight point thirty six percent is very good. That's you know better than people good. But yeah, as Jordan said, this is for those cases that have had enough people report uh, a player for cheating that they go into Overwatch and then their games start to be analyzed by everyone who's on Overwatch and they actually look at the footage and see okay, all right, this person's cheating or this person's not cheating. And uh, one of the things that I noticed looking at the numbers, because they have the cases containing legit users, aim assistance, visual assistance, external assistance, or griefing issues, it's like you're also uh, looking at grievers? Mm hmm. Really? Grieve, grieve. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, anything that makes getting, because, you know, it, it's been a long time since I played anything remotely competitive, but 
that that has been a problem since you connect the two computers to each other. Somebody's yes. just been that jackhole and um, that can really suck the fun out of a game like really quick. So yeah, what do you feel about like automating it though? I mean, does it get to the point where you just let the AI loose with the band hammer? I mean, I mean that that's that's the question, right? Uh, it depend it depends on like how competitive your game is. For some small games, I would say probably not. For something like Dota or Counter Strike, where you know a lot of times there's actual money at stake because there's mm -hmm. a competitive, yeah. there's like a professional league and a professional ladder where people are actually trying to become like better in terms of a skill at this game. So, and it. I mean, it, it defeats the purpose if someone's going to come in with their elite hacksaws. Just mm. be like, oh, I can see you through the walls. Oh, I just have to like move my mouse in the vicinity and it will auto aim to your head. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, it, it it makes it so that, you know, the people who are actually investing time and effort to make to get good at the game, their efforts entirely invalid. Yeah, right on, right on. And uh, cheating in Counter Strike has always been an issue since you know cheating in Counter, Counter Strike is part of the game since since, since the beginning yeah. of Counter Strike, yeah. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what do you Linux on? Yeah, Windows. so a uh, fine person uh, behind boiling steam uh, decided, you know what? Let's do a little bit of a uh, survey to see what kind of distro uh, people are using to basically play their games on and this is the graph that they ended up with and you see ubuntu at the top with 29.8 percent manjaro comes in second place with 17.5 then mint at 11.7 then you have uh arch with 16.6 debian with 5.6 eat it pop os with 6.9 fedora with 3.3 and uh solus with two so the you know like what? the you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say it because solus gets to do a victory lap for registering i mean i mean it's right there right below yep. fedora that's pretty significant yeah I, <laughs> although I mean, fedora's uh, holding if you that average, look uh... at the numbers go ahead yeah if you actually look at the numbers you see uh that 2.5 uh and 2.3 over the past couple of months then 2.2 and now it's two so it's actually on a bit of a de decline, a decline which is unfortunate Decline, yes. <laughs> I, just, I just like that Fedora's been holding on to that like roughly 3.5% for the entire time. I think the Fedora's, yeah. Fedora, I mean, if we're looking at the graph, man, I mean, we get the, it's still the big chunk. This is the Kumbuntu, followed by Manjaro, followed by Mint. So this is clearly accurate to the easiest distros to use first with Ubuntu, then Man Manjaro, then to Mint, then to Arch, then to Debian. Hi. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think Fedora is harder to use than. No, I, th I think the thing that makes people bounce off it is the fact that you actually have to go out of your way to install the NVIDIA drivers. Yeah, um, not but really. I, it's, it's not it's not difficult, right? Like it's well, just people it, being money babies. I think it kind of boils down to where, where you started with Linux, like the idea of dropping, you know, to terminal and installing your own files. Like that's how we used to had do it. Period with everything. There was no yeah. like alternate way of doing that. Indeed. Oh yeah, and yeah, but, uh, I should mention these numbers were pulled from ProtonDB specifically. Just looking at the reports mm -hmm. on what people yes. are playing. I hope yeah. he made them up. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, like we we see Ubuntu's market share shrinking because like a lot of other really good distributions have come up and have started targeting its market segment, right? Well, and and Ubuntu hasn't really been making friends with a lot of the decisions they've been making lately with Mir, with uh, System D and Upstart, to a point, with man, removing 32-bit library a support because it, you see the new shiny. I remember when Ubuntu was the new kid on the block and everything was purple and brown for a minute. Then Mint got the new shiny on it. Then that blew up for a minute. Now it's Manjaro and Arch. That's the new shiny. It's got the Polish on it. Uh, honorable mention, Solus popped up for a second, then, but yeah, it's, it's Poo just the flavor of the week. Pop, I'll, yeah, I'll, Pop has actually been doing pretty good. Pop's doing pretty <laughs> decent, yeah. I, I will I will say, I think I think a large uh, a large component of Arch and Manjaro's success in general is for AMD card users, right? Because um, a lot of distributions will stagger their releases with Mesa and whatnot, um, so mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to get the latest and greatest support if you have an AMD card. Uh, versus something that's more rolling or 
is a more a little, a little more aggressive with uh, the upstream code, uh, like Arch or Manjaro, uh, you're you're going to start getting that AMD support. You're going to get that ACO support very very quickly and very very timely. And I think that that's uh, that's a very attractive uh, property for especially a lot of people who are coming from Windows and have AMD cards, right? Uh, yeah, but you also have to deal with the people of walking out of Windows like right into Arch. Well, that that's kind of, that's kind of I think why Manjaro is e- expanding in popularity because it's Arch, but it's the easy Arch, easy mode. Gonna make it easy. Yes, yep. <laughs> brilliant. And you know, to be fair to your point, Jordan, uh, Ubuntu tends to fall in and out of favor because of the decisions that they make, and it happens a lot. It tends to happen a lot, and right now I think they're actually on the uptick again, because with 19.10, as it turns out, the performance on the default version that comes with GNOME is pretty good. Hmm. So, (laughs) I mean, it works out of the box, man. I mean, to this day, it's like, what should I install? Have you Linuxed how many times? I've I've Linuxed zero times. Here, here's Ubuntu. Deal with that. Why? Because you Google something, that's what you're going to find helpful. Pretty yep. much. <laughs> All right. But that, that, but I, I mean, t- just as a final point, yeah, but now now you're seeing a lot more ArchWiki pop up first because it's a good documentation source. Anywho, coming up next, get your vacuums out, get your mops, and your get kids. your mullet. Hide your wife. Hide the bodies. It's time to go back in time and clean some cereal. Assuming there are no more technical difficulties, welcome back you to the acquisition. You shall not record. I, I mean, we shouldn't stream this anyways. The accused must survive trial from Fedora, Neon, and Debian. Debian. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Serial Cleaner by Draw Distance, done in Unity. You can pick it up for, well, right now you can pick it up for like three mm-hmm. bucks, but... Um, yep. <laughs> if you miss it, you can pick it up normally for about 15 bucks US. What is it? Slip on your flares, grab your shades, and hop on your station wagon. It's time to work as a mob professional cleaner. A good cleaner never gets caught, so you have to make sure you get in, clean up, and get out without leaving a trace of evidence in this stylish, award-winning 2D action stealth game. Uh, Humble was giving this away if you got the Humble monthly. I paid $4 for it, but it's cool. Um, yeah, let, let's let's start. How, how did it run on Debuin? Debuin? Man, uh, I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, it's Unity Joint. So you, normally these days, especially in 2019, don't expect that. And that's on Debian 10, man, with the 1920X Threadripper 2060 GPU, 32 gigajoules of RAM. All that hotness with some NVMe goodness. So performance-wise, 1080, solid 60 FIRPS, 2160. That's what I ran it at, solid 60 FIRPS. And uh, graphics, they work. They're groovy. Was groovy a thing in the 70s? It is now. Yes. Um, controls. X clone out of the box. PS4 out of the box. No complaints. Uh, yeah, man. Right on. Right on. I'll give it a solid clean bill of health coming in with four cheers. I know daddy is not a thing, so I'm not going to say daddy o <laughs> daddy Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30, 64-bit with the i7-6700K with the hyper-threading turned on and the specter... Hi- hyper-threading on and specter mitigations on. Smector. Smector, man. <laughs> it's about, that's about as much as it'll protect you. Smector amount. Um, does, does it launch? Yes. Uh, I guess there's a 1080 Ti plugged in there, too. Um... Performance at 1080p. I didn't have to play it at 1080p because at 2160p, it just worked at 60 frames a second because this game is not particularly graphically demanding. It's just Dust Force Men, all featureless and functional. That has no power in Unity and Linux. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. But no no issues either way. Uh, And control-wise, I was using the uh, DualShock. Works fine. You get the Xbox prompts, but you know, whatever. At this at this point, I think I've been conditioned well enough that when I see X, I realize it actually means square. But you know, it is what mm. it is. Um, so four chairs. Yeah, and over here in uh, KDE Neon with the thirty seven hundred X and the GTX ten eighty, right, it launches just fine. Uh, the performance, it's a good thing that Unity Games uh, actually figured out how to uh, V-Sync bra, and they actually make use of the 144 hertz of my 1440p monitor. So that works very, very well. Uh, graphics, yeah, you can look at it, no issues whatsoever. And the controls, yeah, the DualShock 4 worked out of the box with the Xbox prompts, as Jordan mentioned, but yeah, it's Clean bill of health as far as I'm concerned. Four chairs. Okay, so there you go. Serial cleaner works. 
Oh Vanity man, it's a Judge. serial masterpiece of working. <laughs> Good. They're 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 after me, Lucky Charms. All right, did you have fun with this one, <laughs> dude? Um, as a professionally professional game critic, allow me to be the first of the group to say, "Fuck stealth games." Seriously. <laughs> um, the only thing remotely resembling a stealth game that I personally have ever enjoyed in the history of ever is Middle Earth, the series, the two of them. Because, let's face it, that's kind of a stealth game at the beginning, because if you fuck with anything, you die. Um, but then, focus on the positive, they say. Okay, fine. Well, check it out. It is genuinely hard not to dig the art style and the soundtrack of this game. It is 100% the business, man. I like the look of it. It's well done. It's a style choice. It is not lazy at all. It's groovy, baby. Um, soundtrack's decent. Not a problem there. Runs at a solid 60 FERPs, even in UHD at 2160. And the controls, hey man, they work well enough. I didn't have any complaints. I saw some people complaining like, oh, they're a little glitchy at something. Man, I never ran into any of that. It, uh, for fuck's sake. Listen, man, I, I kind of feel like someone just asked me to try to come up with like some good things to say about Hitler, man. And... <laughs> You know, listen, I'm not comparing Serial Cleaner the Game to one of the worst people of the 20th century. Only the genre that is stealth. Seriously. Stealth games, literally Hitler. Um, what do you think I'm going to give it fun? <laughs> Any guesses? I'm three. Uh, yeah, three. Yeah, I want to... <laughs> I can count to three. Three. Um, yeah, I mean, the stealth mechanic here kind of reminds me of Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake. Every, enemies have, like, a cone of vision, and sometimes they can hear you, and you dip and dodge your way through. And in this case, through means some giant fucking levels sometimes that you need to haul bodies and speed vacuum blood out of. Um... So, I, I mean, like, stealth games aren't usually my cup of tea either, but I gotta say, it is, it is kind of thrilling at times when, like... You got a bunch of dudes looking for you, and you're, like, right in the exact dead zone of, like, three people's vision cones, and they don't see you, and you're like, fuck yes. Fuck yes, I am the ghost. I am the knight. Then they snap um, around, you're like, fuck. But, I mean, my, 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 my main problem with the game is just, like, how much waiting is involved, right? Like, mm -hmm. that, that part's not fun to me, because you, like, you're in a trash can or behind some oils or in a canoe, and you're using your, like, omniscient god vision mode to watch the idiot pigs bumble around their jobs <laughs> trying to catch you um the soundtrack's pretty good although i will say there's some stuff in there that's like a little plagiarism-esque for my taste huh. like yeah someone's gonna sue someone this sounds a little too familiar to some existing stuff um it's all right um i put about an hour into it and it, it's just one of those things where like my frustration towards the genre and the way the game mechanics work stop me from really enjoying it. There are individual moments that I can point to and say, this part is really fun, but it's hard to reproduce. Um, I'll give it two chairs. It's all right. If stealth games are your jam, this one's a pretty decent one, but if it's not, it's not going to change your mind about the genre. If you believe it's literally Stalin. Yeah, and it's really not often you see a stealth game which doesn't rely on darkness for, well, everything, uh, because, yeah, that's usually what stealth, uh, stealth games do. But Serial Cleaner is, in fact, very bright and very colorful. Look at it. Uh, and, yeah, like Jordan said, it doesn't really change your opinion when it comes to stealth games, yeah, and I'm still opinion. very Stupid much... goose-stepping game. Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm still very much meh on the whole stealth genre. Uh, Thief 2 The Metal Age was the one stealth game up to this point that I actually really, really enjoyed. Uh, though, to be fair, that game did rely on darkness a lot. Uh, but this one is completely different to that, and while it is very well done, I will recognize that it is very well done, it doesn't really tickle my fancy. I did enjoy the lighthearted humor for what is a game about covering up... Uh, the evidence of some very, very <laughs> gruesome crimes. Uh, I mean, but... Vacuuming up blood. Yep. <laughs> blood vacuum. LOL, JK. Uh, not really. Yeah, it's uh, the lightheartedness and the humor the, about the whole situation is 
very well done. But I kind of didn't want to play anymore after I got to the disco level that there's like eight cops running around <laughs> and you have to get three bodies uh, to the body drop point. It's like, um... I, I don't want to play this game anymore. I really don't. So, for, yeah, for, the fun for, for was, me was the For me, it was the campsite where it's just like, oh, there's like a yeah. cop right in there and you got to like dip and juke. I'm, I, I don't care enough. Yeah, I really didn't see the fun. It, it was not there for me. So I'll give it one chair. Did well, not my right. bag. Here's oh, there, uh, outside of the... <laughs> The, the llama is not the only vampire because apparently you have a Dyson vampire uh, that you're armed with, which I, I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, you, you do vacuum blood a lot in this game. But, Jordan, especially like in the forest area, the game itself, I think, if it wasn't for the stealth, wouldn't piss me off. A good strat for the forest is like fuck with the cops and get them to chase you, hide, then just go YOLO. Oh, ab absolutely. There a lot A good deal of this is like Unlike other stealth games where, like, if you hide, there's a chance that uh, mm -hmm. the people will find you. If you make it to one of the safe zones, that's it. You're good. You're safe. Good. So there's, yep. I, I, I found myself cheesing that quite a bit by just, like, doing, I, essentially resetting the level because it, it places the stuff you need to pick up in a random location every time you restart the level. So sometimes you can game that and, like, get stuff that's all really, really close to hidey holes and then just do it, just jump to the hidey hole, do the thing, jump back, wait. Do the thing, jump back. Yeah, you trap the cop too. That's pretty good. I, There's I like only so much that. you can do with the mechanics with this, and they missed an opportunity again to like I've called it vacula and put a cape on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Should I, I, I mean maybe, maybe that's some DLC, right? Where you gotta like collect blood for a vampire. Anyways, if you like stealth games, maybe you'll enjoy this one. If not, then you still probably won't enjoy it. Coming up next. We're gonna we're gonna put our hands at ten and two, put the pedal to the metal, and talk about driving wheels because we're all experts on that. Yeah. And it's the end of the show, wouldn't you know it? Yep, I and can tell my got, forehead's itching. Yeah, it's been another hour or so of uh, Linux gaming fueled madness, and uh, it's. Well, it's about time to put a bow on it. So if you'd like to help us put a bow on it for next week, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. The uh, teeny tiny little show box even defaults to LGC Weekly, which is exactly where you should be sending your hate mail. You can also send some feedback for LWDW, or, of course, you can ask Jordan for relationship advice. If... For some reason, you're a game developer, and after watching this, you decided, oh, yeah, let's send those guys some keys. Make sure you send at least three. All hey, right. If cool. you're listening, because I know you're listening, most of you are listening, I want you to keep in mind, there's a nice big warning. If you're going to do a copy and paste from a press release, which is fine, you know, because, hey, man, you don't have time to tailor an individual message to us, and you're going to be throwing some keys in there. Send that to show at linuxgamecast.com, as listed on the page don't eventually get tired then finally be like i can't get through your spam golem like it it, <laughs> it tells you that you can uh, on, on, reading is hard it very 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 <laughs> it is very hard. much <laughs> difficult all right well the, fir the first hate mail, hate mail. our first and only comes from lalo 1975 they say, thanks a lot for talk about new LG4 FF. Thanks to it, I can feel FFB on ETS2, ATS, and lots of car... Uh, uh, that's Sims, not an SMS. <laughs> with, wine yes. proto, <laughs> with wine slash proto. <laughs> yes. Indeed. Did you get enough acronyms in there for you, Jordan? I don't know, man. IDK, BRB. <laughs> DIF. <laughs> LOL, JK, BBQ. But yeah, you know... All, all things considered, kudos, uh, Lilo 1975, because that is exactly what I asked for last week. It's uh, if you have a steering wheel on Linux and you haven't had the, well, the force feedback working, it's good to see that uh, new LG4 FF is actually working properly. That's that's very Ooh, nice to false. see. Now, now that we're thinking about this, but I, I really want to like uh, next week, like a legitimate like motherfucker, I spilt my Starbucks everywhere. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can just spell Starbucks everywhere. I can no longer Let's have children. Go but, back to the pre-pre-super shows, and if you'd like to 
have some sort of context on that. So how was that? Like, <laughs> okay, so with Proton, it was working previously, and then it stopped working. But this is like enhanced, yeah, right? With Proton, yeah, yeah. The, with Proton, the, the, it was the, the, working because it was just SDL doing everything mm -hmm. as usual. Uh, but yeah, the the Linux native games. A lot of them that did have force feedback support, like Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American Truck Simulator, they had... Oh, that's uh, what those stand uh, force, for, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, force feedback support mm. on Windows, but not Linux. So now, if you're using LG4FF, it works. Yay, kernel modules. That's kind of brilliant. Also, yep. Lilo 1975 <laughs> I appreciate your efficiency to the point of, I think Jordan and I were like, the fox is say. Um, yeah, force feedback on Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American ETS Truck Simulator 2. See, I would have. All <laughs> please, right. Please, please like, someone seriously, for... All right. Fair enough, Jordan. Would you have ever gotten ETS 2? I don't know if I would have gotten that. May, may, maybe if I, if I spent enough time on it. Though I will, I will I say for, for, for next week, for next week, <laughs> someone please send us a hate mail that's just entirely communicated in emoji. Hey, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan? What? Go fuck yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, actually, you know what? Yes, I will. On that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you're one of our beautiful party patrons, come hang out. Uh, we do the live video and audio for Death Notes and a Bath starting an hour beforehand. Come say hi. Some thoughts, hints, and allegations. Get in touch with old man me, at Vin Stone, on Twitter, or just at Vin on mast.letixgamecast. Dot com. I'm also on that Wikipedia social media thing, but I don't remember what the URL for the thing is. <laughs> oh boy, am I gonna regret this? But you know what? You should send me your favorite emoji on Twitter at the Burning Fool <laughs> to me or at Mastodon at the uh, MastodonScapecast.com. I'm Frojo. It's going to be a lot of eggplants and poop. Like but I hey. said, I'm gonna regret it. <laughs> nope, just straight dick pics, baby. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you want to follow Richard me on Nixon. Twitter, I'd very much appreciate that. It's at unaccounted four f o u r because already there was already someone with the number four at the end. Because okay, at some yeah, point you just had to start rolling with it because there had to have been one thing where you were the first. Uh, it was. It was uh, Need for Speed World. <laughs> That's the game that, that uh, Electronic <laughs> Arts killed. Yeah, <laughs> that was the one that made me create unaccounted four with the number four at the end. <laughs> one, one day we're going to meet unaccounted six and then we can finally ditch you. Oh, shit. Credits. <laughs> what, whatever happened to unaccounted five, I wonder. He did. I killed him. <laughs> Dissolved him in acid. Old acid wash Mateus. <laughs> it's like uh, so regular that's Pedro, how the clones ended up. Acid. All right. Indeed. All right. Thanks. Go think of Patreons like Artheron and this Fox Dog and Hempty Atomic Ass, Mick G, Barbara Ramp, LDS, Haplo, Makik, and Scoot. We got Go for it, baby. We, we got so many producers. So it many is. of them like Jupiter Broadcasting and Lutris. Nick. Hey, he's got 25 grand that he can spend Dang on us. 25 grand. Oh, yeah. Yabo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Ass, Mastroni, Patargo, The Renekers, Nicole, Cold. Winter Cell, Gonzo, Aldeus, 2000, Dirty D, Chad, Ruben, and Nova, Nova Harker, latest and greatest. <laughs> Nova King. Damn it, now I've got to take a new picture of Freak. He's yeah. going to cut me. Fuck walls Nova full, King. baby. Nova Fuck walls King. full. We have no more fucks to give. Dance. Dance, you bitey fucker. <laughs> Thanks to Don. Don, we have. Don has used, consumed our last fuck. Oh, jeez. Yes. Fuck all three. Now Don has taken clear. our fuck. Fuck, maybe, fuck I, all three. Revenge of the maybe fuck. Maybe I can get something like take a picture of glitter, then have that like put on. Yeah, just take a picture of a pile of glitter and glue it on the board. <laughs> yeah, dude. Bad of everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Five dudes.